ओम शांति 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 सो टुडे देर इज अ पॉइंटर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ पॉम just let it sink into you i have nothing to give you no past no future no comfortable now all there is sits before you <clears throat> hidden then revealed in a single breath this is a pointer isn't it it has several layers of meaning on the surface it says i have nothing to give you this is a call to end your seeking to ask yourself what are you expecting you won't find it here you will find it here but not through seeking no past no future no comfortable now in these three times as much as you search and you seek you will not find <coughs> in these concepts of time and place so put them down just for now all there is sits before you hidden the meaning of this is there is nothing but the self and if it appears hidden stop thinking the self is before you the concept you the belief there is a me this concept of you is veiling your true nature the truth of who you are <clears throat> then revealed in a single breath this is pointing toward the immediacy of the self which is always here unless it's veiled by thinking by conceiving by projecting by this belief in this imaginary you as soon as this is dropped or let go of
the self is revealed. This doesn't take a long time. Don't imagine it to be somewhere in the future. Sri Ramana said, it is closer than your breath. I am closer than your breath. So now, this pointer can go like this. There is nothing to give you. No past, no present, no comfortable now. All that is, is before you. hidden by the mind, then revealed by grace in a single breath. Not somewhere else, not some time else, here, now. Please breathe. In this moment, Notice that you are aware. Not you as a body and a mind. Notice that awareness is aware. Now. And breathe. Breathe in this awareness. Settle into it. It's already here. It's not something you need to create, something you need to seek, something you need to find. Settle. Be here. Sri Ramana said, when you notice that thinking is going on, so this is this moment of awareness, when you notice that thinking is present, look toward the thinker. He didn't say suppress thinking or feeling or contemplating or understanding. He simply said, look toward the thinker. This is the question, isn't it? Who am I? If you look toward the thinker, you soon realize 
Not only is there no thinker, this one I have thought of as me, even as I, dissolves. There's a recognition. Even this I does not exist. He said, when you turn toward the thinker, the I dissolves. So you will not find her. You will not find him. He said, the I, when you turn toward it, toward the thinker, dissolves into the truth. Follow this pointer. You'll see it for yourself. Of course, then there won't be a you self. There will only be the self. Just awareness. Only awareness that knows it is aware can see that there is no me, no I, no you and can know itself as being consciousness. There is nothing to give you. There is no thing to give you. Only this, only this. Do you see where I'm pointing? Some of you do. So if you notice yourself thinking at this moment, trying to understand something, turn toward the thinker. Who is this thinker? This one who needs or wants to understand something. See that you cannot find this thinker and rest. Thoughts will still come and go. This is the momentum of conditioning. This is not who you are. So when the momentum of conditioning comes into awareness, ask yourself, who is aware? Who is the thinker? Who or what is conditioned? Turn toward the seer, the thinker, the feeler, the knower. Soon enough, you will discover that that one, however you formulate that one, whatever your concept of that one is, does not exist. And 
and you'll come to know I am that which is aware behind and before all of these concepts that I call I, you, me, and mine. Before all of that, I am. And this I is the pure I of the self or awareness or being consciousness. That you are. Give up everything you think you know about yourself and assume you know nothing. Accept, I am aware. This is the one thing you not only know, you can be certain of it. And soon enough, you will be. Questions? Please take the microphone. If you, the recording, it's not a microphone, it's a recorder. Please take it if you have a question or a comment. Um, there's something I would like to share. Um, as you know, my mom passed away yes. two weeks ago. And after the day of her passing, I woke up in the morning. And the first thing what my mind told me was, you no longer have a mom. Mm. And I was surprised about that thought. And something within said, that's not true. That's not true. Probably your mom. <laughs> <laughs> could, could be. It felt like I still have a mom, but she's no longer in her body. Yes. And then this song came on in my mind. There's no sunshine when she's gone. Ah. And then again, there was this like, oh, this is total bullshit. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, I, was so, I was just so surprised yes. about whatever it is was trying to lure me in yeah, that's actually good. how it felt very good yeah so then something else happened like before the day of her cremation um something happened with a friend and he showed this like what we would call like very egoistic um behavior not taking any respect for the process that I'm in and mm. putting himself in the first first place. Mm. And it was interesting because before that I would be like so like, okay, you know, this is unacceptable. I'm, you know, this is not happening. If you're behaving like that, you're no friend of mine. Mm. This and is I, harsh. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it's also harsh you know, because I asked, yeah. give me a little bit of time. I'm creating my mom, 
let's come back to this after the cremation because so much is coming yeah. towards me. Yeah, I only wanted to point out how harsh this inner voice can become very quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when so we aren't expecting it. And I'm used especially when we are Yeah, and I'm used to that. That that when when I ask for something and people don't respect it. Yeah. It, that inner voice can be really harsh yes. towards another, out of protection, putting up a boundary, yes. Yes. pushing the other person away. Yes. This so actually, whole dance of ego. Yes. Yeah. So actually, what happened now is, I was expecting that, and that didn't arise. <laughs> and then um, I was feeling a, still a lot of love and compassion for him, seeing that okay, this is just you know, his thing. But my mind was saying, okay, this is like unacceptable yes you unacceptable. know but it was just a layer of mind it was no longer infused yes. by yeah. this uh, needing to uh, needing to react beautiful yeah it is and then i'm listening to your words and then at the same time i'm like okay if that we talked about it how that protection layer that i can put up just to mm -hmm. out of that idea that i need to protect myself so that is kind of feels slowly evaporating dissolving yes yes but then the mind goes like okay yeah who's who's going to be there to protect you <laughs> and i assume as um and maybe that's my question mm -hmm. um if there is a need somehow to to act on something um coming out from an inner not mind infused ego infused emotion infused but an inner source related you will act i suppose no yes and and the way to know the difference is that it doesn't come through mind mm. huh it mm. comes as a direct experience that feels as though it comes from the heart mm. in other words there's no mental processing that happens there's no decision to do this say that think this way, act that way, repress, suppress, push away. That whole process, which happens that quickly, you now see, right, mm -hmm. in, the, in your description, you see how quickly that conditioning rises. When we move from the heart, when that action comes from being, it flows very openly, very uh, gently, but sometimes very forcefully. Hmm? But there's no inner hard to just say this, isn't it? There's no inner sense of disturbance. Mm. Whereas what you describe is that mental turmoil, that mental sense of disturbance where something rises up to protect and defend. That's all coming from the egoic position. The, the belief that there is a me or something that needs to be protected or defended. When that is not there, then the action seems to happen almost on its own but internally there's no disturbance. So one can even say, no, but internally there still is just this peace. There's this recognition from deep within that awareness is here and awareness is saying no. It's not me saying no, mm. it's just saying no. So there's no sense of defense. There's mm -hmm. no one to be defended. It's not coming from that position, which is a, a mind position or a position in the conditioning. So I tell this story from time to time. Some of you may have heard it, but I know a lot of you haven't. That I was living over near Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar Ashram many years ago. And on the rooftop was living a sadhu. And uh, over the course of... Um, uh, several weeks uh, and having chai a few times together, um, I came to understand that this was um, someone who had a deep sense of presence, which is what we're talking about here, this deep sense of presence and whether it acts in a way or not, or whether it just always stays quiet and serene. And one day I was walking on the street near in that area and there was a commotion. There was a man there, and he was shouting at his wife. And I realized that this Baba was standing there next to them. 
And this man was becoming more and more animated. So he was yelling more and more loudly. He was becoming more and more intense and becoming more and more threatening. When he finally was completely absorbed by ego, he raised his hand to strike his wife and the Baba stepped around her to take the blow. And he looked up at this man with his hand held like this. He didn't say a word. The man dropped his hand and began to weep. And then he walked away. A moment later, the Baba walked away. There wasn't a, not the slightest little bit of residual anything left. He simply stood, waited for the blow, and when it didn't come, and the man left crying, he walked away. The Baba did. So this is the what I mean when I say this action or the need to do something can come entirely from the heart and is not processed by the mind. It's just an instinctual recognition and something happens. <coughs> I find that space very challenging. Mm -hmm. especially before my mom passed to also not come out of conditioning or yeah. uh, responsibility and then mm -hmm. waiting for that, just waiting for that moment and mind saying, you need to act, you need to act, you know, this is the moment to act and then not acting. And Yes, but sometimes that's our sadhana, isn't it? Is to, yeah. is to learn to restrain that conditioned mm -hmm. urge to respond in, or react in some way. It's not even a response. You know, the, it's a reaction in the mind. Mm. The response is Baba stepping around in front of the woman. That's a, that's a response. Yes. You yes. see, there's a difference between a response and a reaction. True. So, but it, at, what you're talking about is definitely a step and a stage along the path of sadhana where we go from reactivity to what is present in the mind and the body in the world to response to what is present in the mind, body, and the world, or no response. That's mm -hmm. always the third option, isn't it? So just understand that this will pass. You know, if your sadhana continues, and sometimes you will fail. So let's be clear about that. As long as the conditioning is there, right? As long as the momentum of conditioning is there, there's always the possibility that you will react rather than respond. Mm -hmm. So allow for that. How do I allow for that? I allow through, for that through compassion for oneself, through compassion for suffering, through compassion for conditioning. But know it in its true nature. This is not me. This is conditioning. This is reactivity, right? The circumstance is what it is. What happens, happens. You know, this is, you are not the only actor in a situation or in a relationship, right? When two, more, two or more people come together and some reaction happens, understand that you are not the only actor in that situation. You can have the most open, most loving heart, but if there is a karmic relationship there that is going to work itself out, you are certainly not in control of it, right? So be compassionate towards oneself, toward the other. These are all fictions, aren't they? Self, other concepts, separation, the appearance of differences. These are all concepts. But as you go along in, in your sadhana, in your daily recognition, in the deepening of your own wisdom, uh, these situations begin to dissolve in, in the heartfelt response or recognition. 
of who you are rather than coming out of that kind of conditioning. So when that conditioning is there, recognize co correctly and quickly, oh, this is conditioning, or that, that, response, that reaction was conditioning. Mm -hmm. Forgive yourself, forgive the other, move on. Carry no burden with you. Just strive to do better if it arises again. It's not you anyway. It's good to be back. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Mm -hmm. Hello, Chris. Okay, Hello. I risk it again. Okay. <laughs> I hope there's not that much risk. <laughs> no, but I, I have a question. And Risking you actually <laughs> um, you brought it up again. My question is about grace. Oh. And um, I got initiated um, 43 years ago. I have a long sadhana mm. on and off. Mm mostly on, but sometimes <laughs> off. And uh, I read, I read uh, in um, Ramana's uh, description, he said, um, you need to look for a guru to shower you with grace, and that grace makes you uh, uh, understand the self. Now, in another quote, Ramana says, this guru is your Satguru. It's your own inner guru. Yes. Now my question is, waiting for grace to happen. <laughs> now, it has happened, but, but uh, I'm still not self-actualized. Mm. After all these sadhanas and all these, these um, um, practices I've done. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, everything has failed. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, everything has <laughs> failed. Well, it has. Yeah, you see... <sighs> Is it good? <laughs> but when everything has failed, uh, Grace, where are you? <laughs> are you aware? Yes. Is awareness aware? Yes. Without you. Turn toward awareness. Now, right now, turn toward awareness. Awareness is here. Mm. Awareness is aware that it is aware. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is there a need for you? No. no. You are, there is simply awareness here. Yes. Correct? Yes. This direct recognition, that which is aware, is here now. Deeply recognized is the grace of Satguru. This can only be unveiled 
when this you, which is desperately wanting to succeed, mm -hmm. desperately, is allowed to dissolve. into this eternal and ever-present recognition that which is aware is here now. Initially, this feels as though it's very similar to other forms of thinking But if you settle into this recognition of awareness itself without thinking, without the need for a me to be doing anything, you see that awareness is here. It doesn't need you. <laughs> doesn't need your personality, doesn't need your concepts, doesn't need your sadhana. No effort. No effort. Are you here? Yes. Yes. Not you, right? You are not here. Awareness is here. Awareness is aware. It is aware of sound. It is aware of the feeling of the sensations of a body. Awareness doesn't need you. You needn't construct a story. No past, no future, no comfortable now. See and now. Yes. This recognition is grace. This is not an experience, is it? It's just a recognition. No, there is still, as you said, it, 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 it has a, still the flavor a little bit of an experience. Yes. But it's not. If you come into this moment of recognition and you stay here, that little flavor of experience is just dissolving. And that takes as long as it takes. <laughs> if you stay here, then you just let it dissolve. You're not doing anything. There's no one to do anything. But awareness is here. Now, what you certainly know, if you need, if the mind needs something to hold on to, can say, I am or I am aware. And then this I will also dissolve. This is helpful. Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. But this is also without pressure and it's without force. It's without doing violence to the mind or the body. It's the simple recognition of truth. I am. This I know. It's all I know. If it's all I know, and I feel 
content, happy, aware. <laughs> this is grace, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. So if you feel as though you are not feeling grace in your life at this moment, know very simply and very directly that this is just the mind blocking. This is not you. It is the mind blocking. It is a conditioned response or a conditioned reaction. And relax. What is coming and what is going is not who you are. When you stop like this and feel this presence, then you are certain of this grace, of this recognition. The part about sadhana is that it takes some time for most people to stabilize in this recognition. The great sages like Sri Bhagavan, Sri Ramana, have told us that there is a moment in which that is all destroyed <coughs> completely forever. But he also said that he understood that for this to be his direct perception or recognition at the age of 15, likely meant with no formal training in any religion, his family was not religious. He went to Catholic school for three years, four years. So he was uneducated. He was without formal training in the Hindu tradition or any other tradition. So what he understood was that this, what we call sadhana, must have gone on, perhaps for lifetimes, to bring him to that moment. Can I ask you one last question? Only one. Only one. <laughs> the last one ever. <laughs> <laughs> When that recognition embodies me, mm -hmm. my whole body is vibrating. Every fiber of my cell is in motion. Yeah. Waves of yeah. ananda is, is, is happening even I, I, as I speak. Tremendous joy shaking, disorientation. What is that? Uh, well, this is a personal manifestation of some sort of something letting go, I think. Many people in the tradition have these experiences of various kinds of energetics and various kinds of cities trying to manifest. And the, if you don't want to get caught in them, however, yes. Understand that this is prime time to ask the question, who is aware of this? <laughs> to recognize both that it's there, but also to recognize its phenomenal quality. By that I mean, see it as something which is rising in consciousness, rising in awareness, rising in the body. But because it is arising, and it is being observed, it will only last a period of time and then it will dissolve. There is nothing which comes in the field of awareness or the field of consciousness which lasts forever. It's only the field which is permanent. This is why we ask the question, who or what is aware of this?
Now you can shake away. You will, you can feel, <coughs> you know, you can feel the the energetics of this, and not be caught by it, knowing that it will come and it will go. If it comes, it will go. If it comes, it will go. And if it is coming and going, it is a manifestation of something within the samskaras, within the tendencies of this particular body mind in this incarnation. But its relationship to the truth is still that it is something which is observed. If that is true, who is the observer? Then it becomes useful in sadhana, not a distraction. Who is the observer? Who is aware of this? Who am I that is shaking? <laughs> then I have a question. By observing these forms of Kundalini, I can feel, especially with Pujan, mm. when something is arising. Mm. Now, from the perception of someone outside, how can I react or not react, um, <laughs> respond towards that? Um, yes, observe, but sometimes in the real world, in my life, I have experienced many situations of people having kundalini energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. <laughs> coming up. Mm -hmm. And I observe that. But can you please shine some light of how I can be helpful and where can I find the bullshit detector of people um, pretending to have the shaking, which I also have mm -hmm. experienced. Mm -hmm. And I don't get the shaking. So, and I'm not looking forward <laughs> to mm -hmm. those, you know. <laughs> but if they happen, uh, I have seen a lot of them. So, so first... where is for me or in my field of experiences? So first, understand that when I say mm -hmm. observe, I'm not talking about have no relationship with what's going on. I'm talking about that place within you, mm. which is a place of deep observation. In this field of deep observation, you not only are seeing what is going on in the apparent other, you are also seeing the reactivity and the responsiveness that's going on within this one. So you have to have a choice to make. Mm. Do I need to do something with the other, which if you if, you, if there is something you need to do, understand that happens quite spontaneously. It's not something you need to think through. But you also at that moment have the opp opportunity to not only observe what's happening in the apparent other, but also to observe what's rising here and put most of your attention there. Mm -hmm. So that there may be a response to what's happening out here. And there also may be only silence, which just is here as a supportive recognition of this, the emptiness of this entire space and this entire experience. It is simply empty. So there's no need for your mind, quote unquote, <laughs> to make anything out of his experience. There's no need for you to help, to save, for, for you to change. And if you come to this place where your bullshit meter is going off, just be kind. <laughs> you can also just do nothing, say nothing, or you can say, stop it. This does not have the sweet scent of truth. This has the stink of ego. 
<laughs> but you can only say that or do that from this position of self-recognition, which is open, which is empty, which is kind, which is loving, and which is aware in the entire situation. Always, it's about becoming more and more stable in this awareness or recognition of the one self and less and less interested in the stories of the egos that are around. You know, you see any kind of a teacher, yoga teacher, meditation teacher, satsang teacher, any, any kind of person that's in that situation spends a long time often becoming capable and able to remain stable, present, as this open recognition of awareness, regardless of the bubbles that are popping around in the room. <laughs> because this comes, doesn't it? Yes. You know this, yeah. Yes. So just be sure, the short answer, just be sure that you use whatever is here in this moment to ask the question, who is aware here? Who is this I? If you are sitting firmly on the one seat of awareness, then whatever comes out of that will come out quite naturally. It will come out quite well. Are you aware? Yes. Yes. This is your refuge. Mm -hmm. If you are aware right now in this moment, you say yes, right? Are you aware? Yes. What is there that you need to do? Recognize this. Mm. If you recognize that you are aware, yes, do you feel the urge to do anything right now in this moment? No. no, you don't feel the urge to do anything. You are quite content and quite happy to simply be aware. This is the foundation which needs to stabilize. When it's stable, then this can happen. This can appear, right? The bubbles can pop. People can go through their emotional storytelling if they need to. But the stability which you recognize within your own self as awareness creates both the safe space in which that can happen and also creates the recognition that that is untrue. It's just conditioning. It's just something which is coming and going. There's nothing to do about it. Nothing to stop, nothing to save, no one to save. From that place, you begin slowly to understand that whatever you are looking at, whomever you are looking at, you are looking at the one self. That's it. It's only the self in all its manifestations. From this position, there is just love. You don't even hear the stories. You don't even see what's being put in front of you. It's just coming and going. You are that love, that awareness, that recognition. So now, remember, practice, ask yourself throughout your day, notice, 
that which is aware is here now. When it's easy to do, then if it becomes more challenging later in the day or outside, or outside somewhere, mm-hmm. it just becomes your habit to remain as awareness itself while whatever is going on is going on. And you become very firm in this. And of course, at this point, there's no you doing it, right? It's that you've become familiar with your own nature and you're willing to rest in it. And you have no fear. If you know I am aware, that which is aware is here now, then this is the foundation on which all of your experience can rest. It's the, it's the foundation on which all of your experience does rest. But the way in which you observe and handle and respond rather than react to the experiences changes because as the heart of awareness opens, you find that there is space for all of it. Nothing to fear, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to, no problem to solve, no one to fix. Is this why you need the sadhana to not be afraid or don't get the fear in those moments? The sadhana is useful for that. Um, if you can go straight into this recognition that that which is aware is here now and yes. it is always here and it never changes and it never shifts and it is the one thing which is permanent mm-hmm. and everything else is coming and going, take that right now, you are finished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no more cooking is needed. <laughs> Easy said. <laughs> yes, but this is the experience of yes. recognition. Right. At the, at the moment of that recognition, which is true and which is deep and which is the truth, mm-hmm. what's also recognized in that moment is I have always been this. There was no sadhana. I have always been this. I am always this. I will always be this. Mm. Now the changes are finished. The, you know, the th- Things are still coming and going. So, yeah, understand that this is the meaning and purpose of sadhana, is that this firm foundation, which you feel momentarily when I say, are you aware? Yes, you know it right away. Yes, I'm aware. I'm here now. I know it. (coughs) No guessing. This is the foundation which becomes firm and stable. And the process of it becoming firm and stable, if it doesn't happen, when I say, are you aware, and you say yes, and you never leave it again, if that doesn't happen, then what you are doing when you notice, you observe within your own being, and you notice that which is aware is here now, beginning with the the notion I am aware, but that which is aware is here now. And you need to feel, you somehow feel like you need to remind yourself, recall that, uh, come back to that, however you describe that. That's what we refer to as sadhana. Mm -hmm. And all of the spiritual practices in all of the traditions are all moving us toward that moment where we recognize that that which is Life itself, the foundation of all of this, the creator, if you will, of all of this, is that being, consciousness, bliss, recognition. That is sadhana, that process of coming back. Mm -hmm. And that process doesn't require that you do it in a rigid or... um, harsh way with yourself. It's a simple remembrance. Mm. 
that which is aware is here now until that becomes so stable and solid that whatever happens in that awareness doesn't disturb it. There's a recognition that it's undisturbed. These lovely conversations, they take us always into this remembrance. Walk in peace. Hari Om Tatsara.